Hi. Buying instruments for the boat can be very expensive. Most owners are spending several thousands of euros. What if I told you there was a way to get all the instruments you need for just a couple of hundred euros? It's possible. In this video we'll show you how to get started with OpenPlotter. OpenPlotter is a free and open source operating system for the Raspberry Pi, among others. It includes many tools to help you navigate your boat using cheap hardware. In this tutorial I'll explain what hardware you need and how to download and install OpenPlotter. OpenPlotter includes a free plotter software called OpenCPN with free maps you can access from your phone or tablet. You can also build an AIS receiver and even have your autopilot linked to the plotter software. All of this is pretty easy to set up, as you'll see in this tutorial. For hardware you can use a Raspberry Pi, a micro SD card, a USB cable and a power adapter, and finally a case with a touch screen. Preparing the SD card. The Raspberry Pi only boots from a micro SD card formatted in the FAT32 file system. As a result the maximum capacity of the SD card is 32 GB. Higher capacities won't work on the Pi 4 or lower. If you don't have an SD card reader, you can use a USB adapter. First we need to format the micro SD card with the FAT32 file system. There's a tool called SD card formatter for Windows and Mac OS. You can download it from sdcard.org. Next you'll need to download OpenPlotter on salug.com. You'll find the links in the description. Once we've downloaded the noob's image, unzip it and copy all the files in the map to the SD card. Once the files are copied, safely remove your SD card. Booting open plotter the first time. Now we can insert the SD card into the Raspberry Pi and connect the power adapter to boot and install open plotter. If all was correctly copied, you'll see a screen with all different colors, then a black screen with some raspberries, and finally the operating system should start installing automatically. This could take about 10 minutes so please be patient. When the installation has been completed, you'll be presented with a wizard. Should you notice a yellow icon, it means the Raspberry Pi is underpowered. Try changing the adapter or the USB cable, powering the Pi. Optionally you can change the password. If you don't, the default password is Raspberry. You're now done with the open plotter installation. VNC. To make things easy, let's start by enabling VNC so we can access the Pi remotely from our normal computer. Open plotter comes with a VNC server pre-installed. In the Raspberry Pi configuration, we'll enable VNC. We can get the IP address by clicking on the VNC icon. You can now install a VNC client on your regular computer to connect to the Raspberry Pi. The default username is Pi and the password Raspberry. Getting started with OpenCPN. Next we'll start and configure the free OpenCPN plotter software and download maps. First let's start OpenCPN, depending on your preference you can change the settings to meters or just a simple screen. In order to add a chart, go to Charts. In Chart Downloader we can add the base map. Depending on the resolution you want you can select the version you need. Let's try the highest resolution, so we have at least the whole world's coastline. Next we'll download a map for a specific region. Again in Chart Catalogs select the map you need. I recommend the ENC versions. Those are vectorial charts that offer a very good resolution. You may need to update the database. Finally press OK and let the maps install. This may take a very long time.
You'll now see the detailed maps with depth, buoys and so on. Sensors. Now we can start adding sensors to the Raspberry Pi. This can be done using USB or by using the Raspberry Pi GPIO pins. The USB ports can only power a limited amount of current to the connected devices. Should you see a yellow lightning icon on the top right of the screen, it may be useful to use a powered USB hub. We'll discuss the following sensors. The USB GPS receiver. The RTLSDR dongle for AIS. And finally an I2C board that has a compass and other useful sensors. These sensors combined will give you 11 degrees of freedom. GPS. You can find cheap USB dongles for GPS, costing less than 10 euro. The ones with a wire can help better position the receiver antenna. To configure the GPS, we need to go to Serial. This tool will allow us to link the signals to the software. Connect the GPS USB dongle to one of the available USB slots on the Raspberry Pi, and then select Refresh. You'll now see the new device. Then enter the name in lowercase of at least four characters. Then select NMEA0183 for data, and press Apply. Then in Connections, we can link the signal to the Signal K server. To test the GPS hardware, we'll run OpenCPN. We should see some green bars to indicate the GPS reception. We can also see the red boat icon to see where on the map we are. Using the RTLSDR receiver. Open Plotter allows you to receive AIS data using an RTLSDR dongle. This device allows you to receive radio signals on a variety of frequencies. We can also use it for listening to marine VHF radio, traditional FM radio or even to receive weather charts. But let's start with AIS traffic information. Connect the dongle to one of the available USB ports. Now let's start the settings application in Open Plotter. Hit refresh and install SDRAIS. Next, launch the SDRAIS application. Make sure all tools are installed. There are two services that we can run. Make sure they are dead and stop them if needed. To receive signals correctly, we need to calibrate it so it's listening on the correct frequency. We can enter a frequency correction in the settings of the app. To know the correct number let's install Calibrate SDR. This can be done using the Add Remove Software application. Look for the Calibrate SDR software and install it. Calibrate SDR is a command line tool, so let's open the command line and check what channels are available. You can find the commands in the description. From the list we pick the most powerful channel. In this case it's channel 28. Now let's tune to this channel by entering the channel as a parameter. You'll then see the deviation number in ppm. Run the same command again, but use the ppm this time. Now get this number and enter the frequency correction in the settings for the app. And next we can start the AIS services. We can also select to run the services at startup. To check if it's working go next to a port and run OpenCPN. To find places with boats, you can go to vesselfinder.com. You can find a link in the description. I squared C sensors. Besides using USB to connect sensors, it is also possible to connect sensors using the Raspberry Pi pins. The protocol used by some of these pins is called I squared C. Very useful for a boat project like this is the GY91 board, as it includes multiple sensors in a single board. It has a thermometer, barometer, a compass, and even a gyrometer we can link to an autopilot. It's also possible to connect multiple sensors in parallel. To connect a sensor to the Pi I squared C pins, you'll need some wires and do some soldering. The result may look something like this. Once we've connected the sensor hardware, let's configure the software. Let's go to Open Plotter, Settings. We have to reload the list to see the applications we can install. Next go to I squared C sensors and let's install it. Once installed, we still have to enable the I squared C interface. In the Raspberry Pi configuration, go to Interfaces. Then, enable I squared C. Now, let's make sure the sensors are sending the information correctly. The BMP280 sensor on the board is sending out pressure and temperature data. Go to the I squared C application. And add the BMP280 sensor. It should appear automatically. 
For the missing temperature sensor we have to assign a new key by going into the edit screen. Finally we connect the incoming information from the sensors to the Signal K server. To see if the sensors are working, we go to the dashboard's application. Then go to instrument panel and press show. We see that the sensors are moving. Now let's make them more readable. Hit the settings button and change the units to what's best for you. Then hit the eye icon to see the result. Network. It's possible to set up open plotter so you can connect to the Pi and get the information you need with a mobile device via Wi-Fi. First let's set up the access point. An access point means that your Pi will act as a Wi-Fi network with an SSID and a password, so you can connect to the Pi with another wireless device like a phone or a tablet. Then connect your phone to the Wi-Fi network of the Raspberry Pi. Next you can go to the links of the dashboard by using the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. The default IP address of the Pi server is 10.10.10.1. Getting weather information. It's also possible to download the latest weather information from the Raspberry Pi using XY Grib. Open the Grib file viewer. You'll see a map where you can zoom in and move around to get a specific region. Now, select the region you'd like to download. Next let's download the wind and temperature for the selected area. Once the download is finished, you'll be asked where to save the file. Save it in the home. Pi. Directory. You'll see the result on the map immediately. It's also possible to import the downloaded file in OpenCPN. Start OpenCPN and enable the Grib plugin. The Grib plugin is one of many plugins you can install. Then open the file we downloaded. You can now navigate and see the weather prediction for the next few days. Backing up the SD card. When using open plotter on a boat, it can happen that you lose power to the Raspberry Pi. This may corrupt the SD card so open plotter becomes slow or unusable. Therefore it's a good practice to back up the SD card so you can restore it or have a second SD card at hand. To back up the SD card we'll use a tool called Win32 Disk Imager. Download and install Win32 Disk Imager. There's a link in the description. Then insert the SD card with open plotter and open the tool. You'll see multiple drives as open plotter uses many partitions. Just select one of them. Then select where you want to save the backup. Press read to save the data from the SD card to the desired location. The backup may take a long time so please be patient. Once finished, safely remove the SD card from the card reader. It's also possible to set the open plotter file system as read-only. This will protect your operating system from being corrupted as a result of power cuts. Configuring the IMU. Now let's calibrate the inertial measurement unit or IMU. This allows you to use the compass and see heel and trim information that is useful for an autopilot. To calibrate it we need to open PyPilot. In PyPilot select only compass and hit the calibration button. Go to alignment and wait for the boat to appear. Next, move and turn the sensor around in all directions X, Y and Z. Then position the sensor where it'll be when you go sailing and press boat is level. Then wait until it's finished. Then press axle to calibrate the accelerometer. Again move the sensor around in all directions. Finally, go to compass. Again move the sensor around in all directions. When finished, press OK. Now we need to add the signal K connection. You can see the result by going to the dashboard as explained before. Other options. 
If you don't mind spending a bit more money you can buy a Motisya hat. It's a hat you can plug into your Raspberry Pi and offers dual-channel AIS reception, GPS, compass, heel, trim and pressure. All in one. For just AIS there's also the Daisy hat which costs less but doesn't have all the other sensors. For enthusiasts there is also an open-source AIS transponder, capable of both receiving and sending out AIS signals. I've put some links in the description. Thank you. Thanks to all of the people who provided me with the hardware, software and the information to put it all together. Raspberry Pi is an amazing platform for hobbyists, and in combination with an open source community, has the potential for some amazing projects as you can see in this video. Stay safe and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did creating it. Feel free to leave a comment or support me.